Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm gonna be sharing with you my five favorite spring fragrances. Try and say that quickly five times. Spring is typically the time of year when I start to slightly change the fragrances that I wear. Autumn and winter, you can pretty much wear anything you want and you can all year round, you do whatever you want. But personally for me, a lot of the fragrances that I lean towards, particularly in autumn and winter, are very spicy, sexy, warm. I love a lot of amber, I love a lot of, a lot of tobacco, I love some sweetness, I love some booziness, and all of that becomes a little too much, a little too overpowering, a bit cloying. Once the weather starts to heat up and the fragrance starts to heat up on your skin, it can be a bit too much. So I tend to start moving towards something a bit lighter, something a bit fresher in the spring, but I still like what I like. I still like my fragrances to be more unisex or even masculine, leaning traditionally fragrances. I still love those tobacco notes. I still love those boozy notes, but I just slightly change and adapt my fragrances that I wear to be a bit more warm weather friendly, a bit friendlier on other people, a bit less overpowering. And these are my top five recommendations for this gorgeous season. So first up, let's start off with Rouge Malachite by Armani Privé. One of my first fragrances that I purchased specifically to try and find something that was more wearable in warmer weather, that was a bit lighter, that still kind of appealed to me. I'm not a floral fan. I'm not a gourmand fan. I like my boozies. I like my amber notes. I like my orientals. I like warm, spicy fragrances. And this was my first kind of move away from that type of fragrances specifically because I felt like I needed something that did this more so than the other fragrances I had that was more wearable in spring and this is definitely a floral it's 100% a floral but it's this gorgeous spicy light white floral. There's nothing heavy about it, but it does have this kick to it. I guess maybe it comes just looking at the notes. There's pepper in here and it's got that definitely that slight kick to it, that slight just depth and warmth and spiciness to it that so many florals just don't have for me. They just stay very light and flowery and almost powdery a lot of the time. But for me, this leans a bit darker, a bit spicier than the majority of florals that I have smelled. And it's just perfect for spring. You can wear this day or night. It's very crowd pleasing I find you get a lot of compliments but it's not so strong and overpowering that it's just too much for other people it's just very fresh whilst keeping a little kick of something that's spicy that will still keep it wearable for me and enjoyable for me and what I like next up let's talk about Anishio's Rehab now this to me this is like a woodsy aromatic scent there's something I've said this before it kind of it gives me like fresh air vibes but with a lot more going on. It's a very complex, incredibly smooth, well-blended fragrance. It's got a lot of musky qualities to it, and lots of people will say this smells incensey to them, which isn't typically a quality I would look for when it, we're talking warmer month fragrances, but it stays so fresh and light. And I think, again, it comes back to that sort of fresh air quality that I get from it. And it smells very natural. You know, it's woodsy notes, it's patchouli, it's got a lot of natural environmental notes in there that you know I can just picture me walking through the woods on a spring day and just smelling all of these gorgeous fresh notes it's just so smooth is the word smooth is the word when it comes to this fragrance it's effortless it's easy it's completely inoffensive it's never going to be too overpowering it's quite soft it stays closer to the skin it's very office friendly office appropriate especially in spring and summer it's not going to become cloying it's not good there's nothing gourmand in here that is going to heat up and become like whew, a bit too much a bit too overpowering for anybody it's just such a classy elegant 
scent, very unique to me, just smells like nothing else that I can really compare it to. A lot of people I've seen compare it to Spice Bomb, but I haven't smelt Spice Bomb. I don't think I've ever smelled that one. But the common consensus when I read a lot of reviews is that this is like the better blended, more luxurious, refined version of Spice Bomb. So if you have smelled that one, that might help you understand it. The dry down is quite different according to the popular reviews, but to me, it's just silky smooth, a hint of spice, very woodsy, musky, but in a very light, fresh, I'm just walking through the woods on a summer's day quality to it. It's just, it's so unique and different, but gorgeous and just smells classy to me. Next up, let's talk about probably, probably my favorite fragrance for warmer months. And this is Zerzhov's Decas. Put the bottle the correct way around, please. Now, when this was released, I really had very high hopes because a lot of people were comparing it to Naxos and saying that this is like the daytime, the summertime version, the lighter version of Naxos. And I like Naxos, but it did pull very, very lavendery on me, which I didn't like. But my hope and prayer for this fragrance was that it was going to give me tobacco in a wearable way for the warmer months because tobacco is like my favorite note in fragrance. I enjoy it and love it so much. But the traditional classic tobacco -y fragrances are typically ones that for me become a bit unwearable in spring and summer. So all these kind of reviews saying that this was the lighter, friendlier, easier going version of a tobacco fragrance, it sounded like it was going to be perfect. And it is absolutely perfect. This is heaven for me. I'm obsessed with it. It has a lot of my favorite notes in here. Tobacco, bourbon, vanilla, musk, resins, benzoin, literally tick ticking all my boxes. But the only fragrance I have with those types of notes in it, that is just perfect for warmer months. It never gets too much or too overpowering or too sickly or too sweet or too cloying. It just never gets too much. It just stays at this stunning, the blend, the quality of this fragrance is like nothing else. It's glorious. I can never pick out any notes, but it just smells like me and it's my type of fragrance, but I get to smell like me in the warmer months in a way that isn't too overpowering in a way that doesn't become overbearing or too warm or over the top. It's just spicy, ambery, divine muskiness is the best way I can describe it. It's just so beautiful and smooth and just light enough that in the warmer months, you can still wear this and enjoy it. I will also say actually that this is the most versatile, I think, of all the fragrances I own. I wear this spring, summer, winter, daytime, evening, office, date, into, it will work for any occasion. So it is extremely versatile. There's not an occasion where I would think I can't wear this fragrance. It's perfect. 365 days of the year. Next up, let's talk about Cavort from Fragrance Dubois. Now this was gifted to me incredibly generously by the brand. So I just want to be clear about that. No obligation to include it in this video. I just think it fits perfectly. This bottle is glorious. And this again, it strikes me, it's a warm, spicy fragrance, but it's light enough and not overpowering enough to wear in the spring and summer months. I think the thing is, it's it is a warm, spicy fragrance, but it also has quite a few floral, lighter notes in there that just keep it from going too far to the other end of the spectrum where it becomes too warm and too thick. You know, it has rose, orange blossom, jasmine in the middle notes, and that really stops it from becoming, you know, too much, too thick, too warm, too spicy, too overbearing. All of those florals, I think, in the middle, just keep it, like they tame it a little, you know. It's a gorgeous, very well performing fragrance. It doesn't have a huge, massive sillage, but it does wear for a very long time. You can smell it all day and all evening. It will stay on clothes for days after, but it's never too pungent. There's nothing gourmand in here. There's nothing that's going to cause you an issue warming up on the skin. It dries down to that beautiful sandalwood, incense -y 
finish in the bass notes and it's just very unique very classy and sophisticated and just you know the right side of the line that this is perfect in spring i'd perhaps lean further towards this being an evening fragrance than an office one in the springtime but you can always spray lightly and still enjoy the notes without the performance getting too much. Now this final fragrance is perhaps a little controversial to include in this list because it is right on the edge. It is a bit borderline. This probably isn't a summer fragrance, but I think we can get away with this in spring. Certainly in this country, you know, we're only talking, maybe we're pushing the mid twenties in the spring. It's certainly not hot yet. I think we can still get away with this. This is the Armani Magenta Tanzanite. Oh my goodness, I'm obsessed with this fragrance. Again, this is a warm, spicy, it has some gourmand notes in here. It's got some coffee, it's got some vanilla. It has some cinnamon. It also has tobacco in the base. It somehow stays just a, just light enough that you can wear this in the daytime, you can wear this in the spring months. I think summer, this may get a little too overpowering, but we're yet to see. We'll give that a try. Because in the top notes, there's ginger, cardamom, bergamot, you know, it has that light start, that light opening to it, and it just gets darker and richer throughout the journey of the fragrance. Someone, I read a review saying, this is like heavenly dark chocolate with like a sprinkle of coffee to me. And it, it, I definitely get chocolate notes. I don't, there's no chocolate listed on the notes, but I definitely get a kick of dark chocolate in here. And it is amazing. I love coffee in my fragrances. I love coffee in the mornings and the afternoons, but in my fragrance, I love it as well. And it has this sort of burned coffee, spicy, you know, cinnamon, that chocolate. It just smells like perhaps you're having the most luxurious coffee in a dessert parlor. That's what this gives me, that warm, spicy, but just fresh and light enough in the top notes that I feel like it just keeps it wearable for spring, certainly in the evenings, but daytime as well. It's just, it's it's controversial. It's right on the cusp of whether it's going to be too much. It will depend on how it wears and performs on you. My skin eats fragrance. I can very much get away with this and it won't become too much. It won't start projecting, you know, off the roof. It will be absolutely fine on me. But if you are, if your skin projects more and heats fragrance up more, perhaps it will be too much, but I'm not ready to let this one go yet. It's just a delight and a treat, and I just want to smell of chocolate all spring. So there you have it. Those are my five favorite fragrances for these spring months. Please let me know what your favorite spring fragrance is. Do you change your fragrances up, or you wear the same one year round? Do you switch things up? What do you lean towards in the spring months when you are the weather is just starting to turn and it's getting glorious, and lambs are skipping along the fields and the sunshine is coming out what fragrances do you love for these spring months please let us know in the comment section down below i hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and i'd love to see you in the next one otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye, bye.